Micah Money Movie number nine. Hello, my name is Brian Whittingham and I'm Renfrew Shuttle's Tannehill Micah. And today I'm going to tell you a bit about Robert Tannehill, Paisley's Weaver for you. Earlier this year, Paisley had his very first book festival. This was a, the brochure from it. And it came under the banner of Radical Voices and Rebel Stories. Uh, terrific festival, lots of good things happened at it. And next year, I believe, it's going to be bigger and better, as they say. Lots of interesting venues as well. Crank Place Paisley. If you've not been there, you should check it out. So I'm going to read something that I was asked to write for the opening of the festival. And uh, it contains a little bit of background and then a poem. So, while initially researching the Paisley Radicals, asking the question, who exactly were they? I found connections to the Napoleonic Wars, the French Revolution, the Paisley Radical War, Red Clydeside, and that's only the tip of Paisley's Radical Iceberg. So in my beginning, I'm going to focus on a weaver, or more precisely, a weaver poet, of whom there were a good few, by the way. For example, Alexander Wilson of Paisley, Robert Allen of Kilbarkin, etc., the one in particular featured to become one of Paisley's most celebrated sons, Robert Tannehill, whom, of course, the Renfrewshire Marker Post is named after. In 1810, at the age of 35, Tannehill, unfortunately, took his own life. Near the Paisley Canal walkway, the poet's discarded coat and silver pocket watch were found in the south side of a culvert of Candrin Burn that today is marked as Tannehill's Hole. He was initially buried in an unmarked grave in Castlehead Church Cemetery. Latterly, a monument was erected over his remains. So that was a very sad demise of Tannehill. From 1876, a series of concerts were held in the Glen of Braes. Now I'll digress slightly. This tie I've got on is the Tannehill Tartan. You can see it. I'll bring it a bit closer. That's the Tannehill Tartan. And what you may ask makes a Tartan a Tartan specific to one certain clan or whatever. So what makes a Tannehill Tartan? The Tannehill Tartan is the fact that all the colours in the tie are Indicative of the colours you get in the Glenifer Braes, which Tannehill used to frequent. So that's the connection with the Tannehill Tartan. From 1876, a series of concerts were held in the Glenifer Braes, a place where Tannehill found solace whenever his wanderings took him there. The first concert attracted a crowd of around 15,000. From the proceeds of these concerts, some statues were erected opposite Paisley Town Hall, one of which is Tannehill. This is a Tannehill statue there. And uh, at the earliest opportunity you get, whenever we're out and about again, it's a place you want to visit. The statue, the grounds, the actual Paisley Abbey itself, beautiful building. As good as any I've seen, as good as Notre Dame, as good as Gladwell Cathedral. Terrific place to visit. Anyway, the first concert attracted a crowd of around 15,000. From the proceeds of these concerts, some statues were erected, one of which is Tannehill. On the base of Tannehill's statue is an image of a trio of young women. This represents some women working in a field that Tannehill, in passing, overheard singing one of his songs, which pleased him greatly when he realised his work was enjoyed and appreciated by others. The following poem I've written after having a few visits to Tannehill's grave, also partly written while researching in Paisley's heritage at Abbey Mill Business Centre, a facility that's well worth checking out, where the staff are super helpful and the lentil soup is superb. If you want a wee snack and a want your research. So this poem is called A Breeze of Good Fortune. At Canal Street's railway path, the church's wrought iron gates, 
are padlocked with decay, as if the church is a prop for a horror movie. We stumble over dry twigs and crunch leaves, squelch mud underfoot, the thorny undergrowth grabs at our ankles as we wind our way past the dead, headstones consumed by moss. Through this neglect, out of reach and out of touch, for none but the intrepid to find the remains of Robert Tannehill, buried beside weavers and painters and tinsmiths and coopers and grocers and farmers and dyers and bakers and shoemakers and masons and teachers and cotton spinners and labourers and tailors and threshers and brewers and pawnbrokers and cholera victims and his tenant neighbours that pays the poor. His sentinels, a smattering of views, trees of death that folklore tells us sucked nourishment from the corpses. Perhaps with this weaver of life, they sucked out his ears from his cracked flute and poems that danced to the hum of his whirring limp. Then we gurgitated them into the air, spores drifting through the years, wherever the, gre the breeze of good fortune had a mind to travel to touch the hearts and souls and ears of any far-flung paisley buddies pining for a taste of home. And if you're a mind to take a walk along Canal Street in Paisley, go into Castlehead Cemetery, you got a wee bit of foot on about to get to Tannehill's remains, but it's well worth a visit, as in Paisley in general. So that was me, I'm Brian Whittingham. Hope you found that of interest. And I'll see you again soon in my next video. Toodle poop.